Ahsoka Tano left the Jedi Order after she felt betrayed when the council didn't trust her after being wrongfully accused of bombing the Jedi Temple. Because of this, her and Anakin's relationship started to crack and she became distant and separated and wasn't with him when he needed her the most. However, what if Ahsoka rejoined the Jedi Order? Let's start this story a few months after she's left the Order. She helps the Martinez sisters, Trace and Rafa, with their job selling spice with the Pikes, and after her time with them, she comes to a realization. She saw the slums that the people were living in on Coruscant after she explored the depths of the cities underneath the surface. Those people were forgotten, no one cared about them, and definitely not the Senate. But Ahsoka did, and cared deeply about all people, no matter where they lived or what their background was. And she believed this was the true nature of what a Jedi should be. Someone who serves the people, no matter who they are. But the Jedi of this current age don't represent this, and have strayed far away from this core belief. Ahsoka knows this is her duty, to care for these people, but she knows she can do a lot more good if she convinces the Jedi to change their ways, instead of acting alone. She'll make it her mission, so that the Jedi change their ways, even if it's the last thing she does. She knows she can help the people of the galaxy, even if she wasn't a Jedi but knows she can do so much more as part of the Order. Because of this, she travels back to the Jedi Temple to meet with the Council. Only half of the members are present, and the rest are off fighting various battles around the galaxy. But she explains to Master Yoda that she's reflected a lot during her time away from the Order, and feels as if she's found herself and her true purpose in the Force. Yoda tells her that he's glad, and that this whole ordeal was her Jedi trial. He tells her to bow, and the rest of the council join him in igniting their lightsabers and declaring Ahsoka Tano a Jedi Knight of the Republic. At this moment, Anakin and Obi-Wan are away fighting on the planet Yabama. Kenobi's forces are pinched off and are in desperate need of reinforcements. Anakin is about to deploy his and join the attack as Ahsoka's ship boards his Star Destroyer and the Master and Apprentice reunite after months apart. Anakin is ecstatic when he saw Ahsoka and was extremely happy when she returned to them. They deploy the 501st and successfully aid Obi-Wan and the 202nd in defeating the droid commander and liberating Yabama. After the victory, they congregate their forces in the Star Destroyer and they organize their next movements as a Mandalorian ship lands on their cruiser. Bo-Katan exits the ship and meets with Ahsoka, Obi-Wan and Anakin. She discusses her problem that Maul has taken over Mandalore once again and rules their people with an iron fist. She offers them all a proposal to help her liberate her planet and they get the opportunity to defeat Maul once and for all. Obi-Wan takes the mature stance on this and tells them they need to be cautious in how they act from here. He doesn't let his feelings get in the way. He tells them the Republic forces are spread too thin and that even if they wanted to, they couldn't attack Mandalore as they will be breaking treaties a hundred years old. Bo-Katan tells them that Maul isn't the true ruler of Mandalore, so they won't be breaking any treaty. Ahsoka and Anakin manage to convince Obi-Wan and prepare for the siege of Mandalore. However, they have to change their plans when the Jedi Council send Anakin and Obi-Wan to Coruscant to rescue the Chancellor. Bo-Katan was annoyed at this, but ultimately understood. However, Ahsoka takes half of the 501st with Bo-Katan to begin the siege of Mandalore. The Siege of Mandalore was very similar in this timeline, but the key event that occurred was the fight between Ahsoka and Maul. Ahsoka asks Maul why he wanted Anakin Skywalker to come, who tells Ahsoka the truth, that Anakin Skywalker has been groomed for years to become Darth Sidious's new apprentice, and how he wished to deprive his master, whom he hated, of his prized pupil. Ahsoka was shocked by this information, and didn't believe Maul. She defeats him in a duel, and reports her victory to the council. She tells them she needs to speak with Anakin desperately, but Windu tells her he's been sent to report to the Chancellor that General Grievous has been located on Utapau and that Master Kenobi has engaged him in combat. She mustered to herself that the war could be over soon, and Windu tells her that it depends on the Chancellor. Ahsoka asks him what he means by this, and he looks around to the other council members. Ahsoka is a Jedi Knight in this story, and not just a citizen, as Mace labelled her in the original timeline. She is very close to Anakin, so has the right to know what he's up to. Windu tells her the dark side surrounds the Chancellor, and for the war to properly conclude, he has to give up his emergency powers and leave office, 
but they're beginning to think he may not do that, and they're contemplating taking measures in their own hands. Ahsoka was going to wait to talk to Anakin alone, but realizes this information may be bigger than she realizes. She tells the council what Maul told her, that he tried to lure Anakin to Mandalore and get back at his master Sidious who abandoned him because he believed that Anakin Skywalker has been groomed for years to become Sidious's new apprentice and wanted to ruin this for his master. The masters present are shocked at what Ahsoka has said, but she follows up, asking how Anakin has been acting as of late. Windu tells them that he has seemed off and Yoda mentions how Anakin came to see him about false visions, premonitions of someone close to him dying and can sense the fear leeching off of him. Ahsoka thinks on this. She knows about Padme and Anakin's relationship, although she's kept it secret for their sake. But maybe Padme is the one he sees in her dreams. Ahsoka knows she's pregnant, and maybe it's all related. She tells the Masters that it seems the end of the war is upon them, and the Republic victory is assured. But maybe the Sith have only just begun their final plan. Windu steps in, and theorizes that maybe Anakin is the Sith's endgame, to manipulate the so-called Chosen One and use his power against the Jedi. Ahsoka wants to say it's impossible, but knows with the threat of Padme's death, Anakin would do almost anything to save her. They all know Anakin is more susceptible to his emotions and the dark side than most Jedi. Yoda commands Aayla Secura and Ahsoka to return immediately, and he will also return to Coruscant. The end of the war with the Separatists was upon them, but the Jedi have not yet defeated the Sith. Ahsoka, Yoda, and Secura arrive at the Jedi Temple Hangar Bay to find Anakin walking and talking with Mace Windu. They interrupt the conversation, and Windu tells them that Anakin has just told him that Chancellor Palpatine is the Sith Lord they've been looking for, and revealed himself to Anakin. They all looked at each other. They were right in their theory. Yoda tells them they must act right away and go to arrest the Chancellor, but proclaims that Anakin must remain in the council chambers until they return, and stay with him, Ahsoka will. Anakin objects to this. He knows the Masters will probably be enough to deal with Palpatine, but that's his problem. He needs him alive, because without him, he cannot save his wife. But Yoda tells them their goal is to arrest the Chancellor and not kill him. Ahsoka and Anakin go to the council chambers and sit down on one of the chairs. Ahsoka asks Anakin if she can talk with him, that she can sense the immense turmoil he is under. Anakin stays quiet, wrestling with his inner dragon until Ahsoka asks if it's about Padme. Anakin looks at her, eyes wide, and Ahsoka tells him she's known all along. Anakin starts crying as he reveals everything to Ahsoka, their marriage, their children on the way, but also his nightmares of her dying in childbirth. He tells Ahsoka Padme is everything to him and cannot live without her, that he searched for the secret to save her, but the only way he has found is through Palpatine, so desperately needs his help. But Ahsoka reassures Anakin that the Jedi Council is the most powerful group of beings in the galaxy and have access to the best medical technology and together there is no way she can die. Anakin asks Ahsoka how she can be so sure, who tells Anakin it's because she has faith. Faith that Anakin will be rewarded for all the good things he's done in the galaxy. They sit in silence until the council door opens and in walks Yoda, who tells them Palpatine has been arrested for his crimes against the Republic. Hours later, after the entire council has returned to Coruscant, they meet in person, with Anakin and Ahsoka standing in the center. They discuss the recent events and explain to everyone how the Sith's plan was to convert Anakin to their side and use his power against the Jedi Order. But Windu only wants to know one thing. How did Palpatine manipulate Anakin? What did the Sith promise that made it viable for him to join them? Anakin looks at Ahsoka, who nods her head. Anakin tells the council the truth, about his family, his marriage, the babies, but also the nightmares which Palpatine twisted and used to try to bring him to his side. The room goes silent in shock, as none of them expected this. Windu starts berating Anakin for his attachments, and tells him he never trusted him all these years, and he finally knows why. His attachments left him susceptible to darkness, and almost resulted in the death of the Jedi Order. But Obi-Wan chimes in, telling them all that his attachments wouldn't have been bad if he was taught to deal with the surrounding emotions and to not let them consume him. Yoda asks him to explain more, and Obi-Wan attacks the Jedi principle of no attachments, that it's impossible to not feel attachments towards people, that it goes against basic nature, and without proper training, anyone would be susceptible to such emotions. Ahsoka joins in, saying that as Jedi, 
We should be taught to not let emotions consume us, not shut them out in the first place. The room goes silent, as Yoda's mind processes what's being said. He tells them that he'll think on this, but for the time being, Anakin will stay in the Jedi Order, and that the Council will help Anakin with his wife's imminent death, and promises she will not die. Windu looks over to Yoda to interject, but Anakin thanks the Master, and walks out of the room. The Council keep their promise, and brings the best Force healers to Padme's birth, in case anything goes wrong. However, they were not needed, and Padme's pregnancy was a success, and she gave birth to the twins, Luke and Leia. Anakin was extremely happy. He's finally got everything he's ever wanted, with his closest friends, Obi-Wan and Ahsoka by his side. Ahsoka was happy with her decision to rejoin the Jedi Order, which gave her the opportunity to save her master from a dark fate that almost consumed his world. But now her true goal would start, to change the ways of the Jedi Order so that it could begin serving the people of the Republic, not the Senate. In the years following the end of the Clone War, the Republic flourished. Changes had been made in the Jedi Order, who now represent the Jedi of old instead of the dogmatic Jedi of the High Republic. With the approval of Chancellor Bail Organa, the Jedi Council decided to step away from the Senate and aren't obligated to carry out their orders. They have jurisdiction to practice their peacekeeping ways on Republic worlds and were able to act independently but also could work alongside the politicians if they deemed it beneficial. This was written into the Republic Constitution so that it could not be changed in the future. With this, the Jedi changed their ways, most notably their philosophy on attachments. Anakin was the pioneer for this, alongside his master Obi-Wan and apprentice Ahsoka. They petitioned constantly to the Council how attachments should not be forbidden for a Jedi, but instead proposed an amendment to the Jedi teachings that included a whole section on dealing with the emotions that accompanied significant attachments and emphasized how Jedi should be taught to learn and deal with these emotions instead of ignoring them. Over time as they mended their proposed curriculum, they convinced the Council, who amended the Jedi's philosophies and began to allow attachments in the Jedi Order. Over the following years, many Jedi would begin forming their own families, whilst others stuck to the traditional ways. With Satine's death, Obi-Wan didn't think he'd find someone whom he loved on a similar level, but was open to the idea. Obi-Wan, Ahsoka, and the Skywalker family met often for dinner in their house and enjoyed each other's company immensely. Anakin and Padme had a couple more children. His third child, Serafina, often called Sarah for short, inherited her father's strong connection to the Force and her mother's intelligence and diplomacy. She was a whirlwind of energy and had the same rebellious spirit as her father. Her laugh would light up a room and she looked up to her older sister Leia immensely. Their fourth child, a son Cain, was the quietest of the Skywalkers. He enjoyed taking apart and rebuilding droid systems and had the same innovating spirit as his father. His curiosity was endless and his connection to the Force would help him one day become a formidable Jedi. Eventually, Luke and Leia would become Padawan to Obi-Wan and Ahsoka respectively and started out on their Padawan journey. The experience was long and grueling, but they learned a lot and their power in the Force developed significantly. They became honorable Jedi, protecting the peace their father had fought for and the time came when they would pass their Jedi trials to become Knights of the Order. Following this, Ahsoka would be promoted to the rank of Jedi Master and Anakin couldn't be more proud. The day would come when it was Yoda's time to step down from the rank of Grand Master and the Council voted on who would succeed him. There was a tied vote between two, Anakin Skywalker and Obi-Wan Kenobi, who both shared the role as Grand Master of the Order. They were sworn in during a ceremony with many Jedi and important senators alongside Anakin's family supporting them. He looked over at Ahsoka, standing next to him and smiles at her. He couldn't have done any of this without her and remembers the pivotal role she played in preventing his descent down the dark path. He couldn't be more thankful and happy with his life. He finally got his happy ever after. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to check out What If Anakin Never Turned to the Dark Side animation and What If Anakin Skywalker Was Trained by the Force. Please consider becoming a member of the channel to help us out immensely, to see video ideas and thumbnails before everyone else. Please like the video and comment. I love replying to you all and may the Force be with you.